So I've got this .NET binary. It's a piece of malware. I think it's actually a modified async rat. And it stores its config values encrypted with AES. But it's not just like a plain, straightforward AES. Uh, there's a bit of a twist on how it like stores the HMAC and the IV and the encrypted values. Um, and when I see these encrypted values, I love using CyberChef. Um, it's a bit tricky to do for this case, though, because I've got so many inputs. I've got to pass in the key. I've got to actually do the key derivation. I've got to actually take the ciphertext, break it apart, get an IV and a HMAC out of it. Well, I don't need the HMAC, but throw that part away. Um, but I recently learned about registers from video on uh, MB Research's channel. Um, I'll include a link to his uh, channel in the description. It's great. It's great malware stuff. Um, but this is going to be a great way to practice it. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to take a look at this malware. Um, I'm going to start off in .peak here. Um, I've got the malware loaded here, and we will go to the client uh, settings here. And what we've got here is this settings class. And the settings class has all these base64 strings. Um, there's a few that are clear text, app data, iTunes.exe, um, but most of them are base64. And when I come down here to actually the initialize settings thing, what it's going to do is it's going to read the key. And it's going to base64 decode it. So we can see that right here is just that's the key just straight base64 encoded. Uh, it's then going to create this AES object with the key, and then it's going to use that object to decrypt all these other ones and, and just overwrite their values with the decrypted values. So then presumably in the rest of the malware, it can just use these as it wants. Um, when I first saw this, I spent longer than I'm proud to admit trying to jam like, okay, well, this, this must be some standard .NET AES library. I should just jam this into, you know, take the key, take the value here. Um, the default AES mode is like, um, I think it's code books, which doesn't even take an IV. So I was like, just jam all this in there in CyberChef and it should work, right? Um, but it didn't. Now, there's an easier way to figure this out. Um, and I'm going to jump over to that real quick and just show, you know, we can go to the NSPY, for example, and I've got it up here and we can go to the client settings and we can put a breakpoint, right? Let's see, add a breakpoint. And in fact, we'll go ahead and just debug it and hit OK. And we're now running and it's going to run to this point. It takes a few seconds. Here we go. So now we can start stepping. We can step over. Um, we just decoded that and you can see the decoded key comes back right here. Um, it's kind of small, but it's not, you'll trust me on this. Uh, we create the new AES object. And when we decrypt the ports here, the return value shows up right here. So it's 666-777-111-5544, all comma separated. Um, so we could step through each of these things and see the different values that they have in the config. Um, and that's fine. That's that's useful here. There might be cases where it's not you can't do that. And I, I think this is still fun to do in CyberChef, so that's what we're going to do. Um, back over here now, what I learned eventually, my, this is something about uh, C Sharp that always throws me off, is we've imported all these other namespaces up here, including uh, client.algorithm, client.helper, and that just gives us access to this AES-256 object. If we come over here to the client algorithm, we'll see AES-256 is an object defined there. Um, I much prefer Python, where you the thing you import, you know, if I imported client algorithm, this would have to be client algorithm.aes256, or I could do it from client algorithm import AES, but it would be very explicitly in the file, and that C Sharp doesn't require that of you. So. Okay, so now we know that exists. Let's go take a look at it. Um, let's shrink this for a moment. Um, it's got some constants up here, the key length, uh, IV length, HMAC, SHA, um, saves itself. A, there's this uh, salt that we're gonna use here. We'll, we'll note this, we'll come back to it, we'll use this later. Um, it's got a, let's see, it's gonna call the um, RFC 28, 98 derived bytes. Now that's the, it's more commonly known as PBKDF2 uh, key derivation. And we'll note it uses the master key, which is what we pass in, which is the, the decoded value from settings, um, the salt, which is that value up here, as well as an iteration count of 50,000. Um, and then when we, let's go to the decrypt function here. So first thing we're going to do is we get this memory stream from the input. Um, we read, the first thing we do is we read 32 bytes off of it, and that's the HMAC. We make sure that matches up. Now, when we're decrypting, we don't really care about the HMAC. I'm going to assume that the stuff is not uh, corrupted in any way. Um, then we're going to read off here and save it as the IV, 16 bytes. And then we save the rest of it here into the stream decryptor. So we read the rest of it into this, uh, this stream. So we've got 32 bytes, 16 bytes, and then ciphertext. Uh, HMAC, IV, ciphertext. And so... 
we've got, I think, all the info we need now to actually do this decryption. We've got the cipher text, which composes these three parts. We've got the base 64 encoded key and the salt, um, which we can pass to the PBK DF2, which we know uses 50,000 iterations. Um, we know, let's see, somewhere in here we have uh, cipher mode CBC, so we have in our padding mode, we know those are the stand, um, standards, so we'll need that for Cyber CyberChef. And uh, I think we're good. The only thing we can do right now, real quick before we leave here, we are going to need this salt. And right now, this is just a list of 32 integers. So I'm going to just grab this real quick. Um, I just want to jump over. Let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? Um, I wonder if we can do this in CyberChef. And don't even, well, let's give that a try. Um, nah, that's that, that seems too complicated. I'm going to jump over to a Linux VM real quick. Um, we will, let's go to here to a uh, previous, we can close you, open you up. Let's make you a video. And we'll just do uh, vim, the, paste these in. Now I can uh, control V, oops, let's get out of insert mode. Okay, uh, control V to get a visual block and go up to the top here and get rid of all of that. Um, and then I'm gonna do something like, uh, what do I wanna do here? Uh, percent S, uh, this come a new line with, I guess we'll keep this come a space global like that. Now we have a list of ints. And then I can, oops, quit this, go into Python, say x is equal to that. And now we can say uh, d for d in x. And we're going to, what are we going to do with this? We want to get, I want to get just that nice hex string. So I'm going to say int, oh, it's already an int, um, f d comma o x, uh, x, o2 x, so we print them as hex like that. Beautiful. And I want to, it's important to do the O2 because I don't want this zero to get lost um, along the way or like this zero zero to become just one zero. Um, and now I can do 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 dot join, join, and that. And now I've got the salt. So we'll, we'll just grab that there. Whenever we need the salt, we've got the salt. Um, we, we can just make sure when of that expect to be 64. It's 64 because it's 32 bytes. Um, so we're good. We got a hex there. Okay. Now, uh, cybership. Let's check it out. Uh, ooh, cybership.org. I don't know about that. I want the GCHQ one. Um, oop, I did not. Huh, I thought this would be so hard to get to. Um, GCHQ. There we go. GCHQ.github.io. Perfect. Okay, so I've got my thing. So, what do we want to do? Let's start by going ahead and we'll grab the uh, values from the settings. So we will come to do here and we'll just start with this ports value. We've already seen what it is, so we can do that. We'll put that in here. Um, now, we got this. The first thing we need to do is break it into its three parts. So we will say, I really, I can throw away the first. Well, so we'll start with base64 decode this. Um, from base 64, so we have it in binary. Now, it's, I'm going to be doing a bunch of like breaking apart and putting back together. So I'm actually going to just go to hex here. And this, and let's, let's do no delimiter. So I've just, I got a nice hex string. Uh, okay, next, I want to remove the first 32, the first 32 bytes, which is going to be 64 characters now. So we'll just do a regex, regular expression, and user defined regex. So our regex is going to be dot 64 of them. Um, we're going to want that at the start of the string, so we'll put that there. And then, whatever is left, we want to match on. Um, we'll say dot matches all, although it, it doesn't matter here because we're not going to have anything. Um, we want output format, we're going to list capture groups. And so what we've done here is if we turn this off, we have 160 bytes here. If we turn it back on, we have uh, zero bytes, because it's, it's annoying it shows you that. But we can see um, we got rid of a lot of these, but it's still the same. See, it's still going to end with 8171. So, 81, so we just cut off the first 64 characters, which is 32 bytes, which is this, the HMAC. We don't need it. Now, let's use the register here. And what register, this is super cool. I didn't know about this until recently. Um, we want to get the first 15 bytes, the 32 characters of hex, and we want to capture that into this register. So we're going to say, open, th open things, say start a string, uh, dot we'll say uh, 32, like that. And that is going to say that we are going to take the first things and we're going to save them as R0. So whatever this first 32 is, we're saving as R0. Um, in fact, while we're here, let's go ahead and create another register. And we're going to say um, start.32. And we then we want to capture.star rest. Oops. 
don't know how I got stuck there, but we'll... Whoa! Uh, Capture.star rest, like that. And so you can see here, uh, hopefully it's big enough, that we have 1B through 2587, which is right there, and then A15A, which is the next thing here. So we've saved those as R0 and R1. And so we now have the key, uh, the ciphertext in R1, the IV in R0. Um, the reason we need to save that is because the next thing we're going to do is going to worry about our key derivation. So we'll do uh, PBK, here it is, derive PBK DF2 function. And this is just going to stomp whatever was, it doesn't take any inputs from the chain and it's just going to stomp it. So um, let's go grab our passphrase. Uh, where is our malware? Uh, the key is right here. It's in base64. We'll grab that and paste it here and say base64. The key size, uh, if we remember from the malware, is, well, it's 32 bytes, which is 256 bits. So we will put that up to 256. Uh, iterations, if you remember, we saw on the thing, it was 50,000. Um, now, we didn't actually see anywhere in the code um, what hashing function was used. I'm just going to leave this with whatever was default. Um, but, but also make a note that if it doesn't work, this is a place to come back and play with. Um, and then we need our salt. We can grab you here, copy that over here, paste, paste that in, in hex, and boom. So now, you know, if we turn this, this, this has no relation. If we turn this one off, this is it's completely unrelated to this other output. We've stomped all the outputs. So we've got the key here. Um, now we need, we need to save this key. So we're going to go back to register. Uh, let's go ahead and just double click. It's easier to get it in there. And you can see now we're actually, this is the thing it's starting with is actually capturing exactly what I want. So that's perfect. We're good there. Now, what we really want to do is get the ciphertext back into the chain. So it can be the input to the, um, AES. And so I'm going to go with a replace, a find and replace. And it's going to be a really silly one. We're going to say find start dot star to end, find everything. And we're going to replace it with, what do we say? Uh, R1, dollar sign R1. And so what we've just done is we've taken the contents to register, register one, and we've put it back in here. So this is now going through our pipeline. This is now what's coming. And now we can do our AES. So we can say AES decrypt. Let me just double click it. Our key is R2. And that was in hex, perfect. Our IV was R0. And that was in hex. Uh, and look at that, just it already worked. Um, our mode is CVC, our input is in hex as well, and our output is raw, and boom, we've got this here. Uh, and it's working. Um, we could jump over here and grab, so like, let's check out the hosts. Just once we have this recipe, we can grab this, come back to Firefox, paste that in. It chomped for a second. You can see now we got 127.001 as well as 194.37.85. So um, I could go through the rest of these strings and pop them all in here and get their decode. If I found a different sample that uses the same algorithm, I could grab its strings and do this as well just by saving this recipe. Um, so this is this is really cool for, this is one of the cool things about CyberChef. Um, I could also write a Python script that took these strings and did this as well. And it might be a little less having to use these registers and keep this pipeline in place. But um, for just for people who don't code or just for sort of keeping track of um, simple things you want to do in uh, CyberChef, I think this is super cool. So um, I mean, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I will talk to you next time.